Now, in the making of Christ, what are those three things that really made Christ Christ and that we can never escape? Number one, exposure to teachers. If, if ever there was anyone that didn't need a teacher, it, it was Christ. I mean, why would they need a teacher? Why would the world go to school? But you see, it's a syllabus. And when we say it's a syllabus, it's just like you study medicine now. You have to just go through some things. So Christ could have escaped that. But if he, if he escaped that, he would have edited part of the training in Christ for us. So there'll be a missing element somewhere. We'll lose a bandwidth. And that's why when John wanted to tell him, you don't need to be baptized, he said, no, we have to allow it to be so. Because if we don't allow it to be so now, a generation will arise now, they will not believe they need to be mentored. Christ had to linger on in Jerusalem. He had to go into the feast of uh, uh, Passover with his parents and when they were going home, that was the beginning of the count of the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Harvest. But the most important thing is that this season, who are your teachers? Part of how to fill the water pot is to have teachers. And when we are talking about teachers, for crying out loud, folks, you see, I'm talking about teachers in the vital. You see, some of us need to go back into serious research and you need teachers. Christ are teachers because the way it works is that the Christ in you cannot be fully deployed if you are not taught. And Christ did three things. When he found his teacher, he listened. He sat down. He asked questions. The second exposure that Christ had is to go back into vocational training. Christ was Christ. You know, after the experience in Jerusalem, he could have stayed back in the temple and begin to chant Psalms. But the Bible says when the prayer found him, he went back to, to, to Nazareth and he was subject to them. Imagine this was Christ. At 12, he was already delivering scriptures. He had answers, he had understanding. And with all that, if you were to be him, what, what would you think should be the next thing? The next thing is to tell your parents, after all, Samuel was younger, before he went to Eli. <laughs> the next thing is to tell your parents, to say, well, you could see, this is what my life is all about, so I'm here. In fact, I'm going to follow one of these rabbi home. I'm going to be living with this rabbi because these are the teachers and, and I'm flowing here. The way I've never flowed in 12 years, I'm flowing here. Can't you see something is happening here? I'm here forever. It will never be Christ. But how did it become Christ fully? Carpentry. Because carpentry is a trade of precision. Mathematics is involved. Physical terminal is involved. And as he was doing that, he began, began to increase in stature. For Christ to increase in stature, it was not a theological education, it was vocational. So at times, stature is research. What is the thing in my vocation? Imagine Christ was building capacity and stamina for ministry in carpentry shed, not in theological seminary. So let's operationalize carpentry because why does it have to be carpentry? It could have been fishing. But God, you see, like, like I said, it's a syllabus. Carpentry is where, number one, you are a builder. You learn how to be precise. A application of mathematics, you, you need to know how to measure. Five meter is five meter. Number three, you need to learn how to use tools. That means things you can't do with your own. And, and, and look, there are tools all around us, wasting away. That means the carpentry in you, oh, and that's what I like. There's so many things you were on at. How holy king a carpenter. So, so look at you now. How much of a carpenter are you? You understand? Well, personalize carpentry now. Are you precise? And do you know carpenters don't sit down? That was why Jesus could go everywhere. Because those years of carpentry gave him the biceps. He could go everywhere. You had, I mean, just his chair today in Judea. I mean, the guy already carried wood. Carpentry is excelling the use of tools. Because almost every operation in carpentry, you can't even use your hand. Write it down. This season, what are the tools God has given to you? That is the carpentry in you. And as you are learning the carpentry, that is when Isaiah is coming alive. That is why you are also noticing those who are doing some other economic activities, like the guy going to the farm, and you are like, that's the kingdom of God. That's why you are noticing the parable of the talent. How somebody received five, somebody received two, and somebody received one. Because once you're in a space where there are activities going on, insight will open up. As Christ was doing carpentry, he gained three things. Which are the three things we must gain this season? Number one, increase in wisdom. Wisdom. We need an increase in wisdom. Increase in stature. Stature, capacity building. And increase in favor with God and man. Very, very important. And the last one. Christ submitted himself to the spiritual resource around him, and that is John the Baptist. 